Okay, so I think now we're ready to get started. Um, so Jeff, do you want to, tr to start us off by just giving a, a broad overview of where we're heading with student organizations for the upcoming year? Uh, sure, give me one second. My computer is about to die. For some reason, my plug is out. No. <laughs> um, ah, now it's working. Yeah. Um, and then we, uh, you know, at any time, if you have questions, feel free to either um, just unmute and ask, or you can put the question in the chat and we can read it out loud. Or if you are more comfortable sending a private message, you can send a private message to either Jeff or myself and we can read it out loud um, anonymously. Whatever works better, we wanna make sure that this is a comfortable environment for you and one where we can get as many of your questions answered. Um, with that said, we don't have all the answers, but we will try our best to find them um, and get some of these things ironed out. So looking forward to a good discussion this morning. Yeah, uh, Lauren, what do you think is best? Just talk about the broad strokes or like go right to the document? Go ahead and go to the document. I think that might be a good idea. So uh, while we've been trying to figure out exactly what is happening here, we've drafted a, a multi-page document here. I mean, uh, can everybody see it? Yes. So uh, let me hit admit here a couple times. Uh, I, I can go ahead and take care of that, Jeff. Oh, you got it? Okay, good. Yep. Um, so we, we've prepared a multi-page document here, which is going to basically serve as the, the general understandings and the, every piece of information we know about what's going to happen in the fall is going to basically go into this document. Um, but generally, you know, like we know, we're opening. <laughs> um, we plan on having mixed methods. We plan on having events. We plan on having in-person and hybrid events. Uh, and we plan on adhering to all the mandates from every local, state, and national health official required for events. So if when the governor yesterday says that indoor events are now limited to 25, that means all of our events are limited to 25 if they're indoors. Uh, what this also means is this document isn't going to tell you what the capacities are or what the rules are because the rules are constantly changing. Um, so, you know, generally we know, and this is not new, that all the registered student organizations are allowed to hold events on campus, and as long as campus is open, we're going to continue to hold events. Um, but best practice in this time is going to be to try and move as many things online and as hybrid as can be. And what does hybrid mean for an event? It means that maybe some people are in the room and some people are watching on Zoom. Uh, means maybe there's uh, a limited number of tickets and those tickets are given out, you know, prior to the event. So that way, if I live in Atlantic City in the residence halls and I know the event is sold out before the event happens, I can stay in my room and watch on Zoom. So um, if I just slide down this here and I'll highlight basically we are expecting to hold small in-person events um, since many of the spaces are going to be used for classrooms, uh, you know, including like the event room, the board of trustee room and all those things. There's going to be tables and chairs like desks and chairs. And because it needs to be a classroom at 8 a.m. the next morning, we're probably not going to be able to move a lot of the furniture. So, um, the social, the, excuse me, physical distancing setups that are set up in most of the rooms are probably going to stay in those rooms. Um, that definitely restricts the kind of events that we're going to be able to do. Um, but as I slide on down here, you can see on letter E, you know, if you are funded from the activities fee, we want to make sure that um, everything is still eligible. We're, we're giving out tickets in a fair manner. We're, if there's a prize, the prize can be won by the people watching on Zoom. Uh, you know, if, if we're spending the money, it's getting distributed equally. Um, yeah, if I keep sliding down, uh, you know, we are going to be pushing for a lot of outdoor events. Obviously, we know the capacities for outdoor events are a lot higher, so we'll be able to get more people in them. Um, is it going to get cold? Yeah. Is it going to get rainy? Yeah, we're going to deal with it. Um, let's see here. I'm going to keep sliding down food, food and events. 
Um, right now, we're not allowed in the state of New Jersey to eat in groups indoors, and that's what we're going to do. So, um, you know, if, if you do have food, it's going to be an outdoor event. Uh, we would prefer that if there's any food, it's prepackaged so people can take it with them, um, especially because, you know, if uh, Set is doing a, cake, a, a cupcake decorating and they want to do it for 100 people, only 20 might be in the room and 80 of them might pick up their cupcake and do it at home. So, you know, that's the kind of grab and go thing that we're looking for. Um, trips, we're currently, you know, dealing with the university's rules on trips and things, but we expect that, you know, small trips will be able to happen, um, especially things that are going to an outdoor place. So if you're trying to uh, go whale watching and it's the whale watching company is open, we're going to be able to go on that trip. Uh, tabling, we are uh, doing, going to have tabling. Tabling is going to be mostly outdoors because the indoor spaces are kind of small and, you know, to make sure that everyone can pass on both sides of the hallway and not get too close to people, we can't, you know, shrink that hallway in with tables. So most of our tabling is going to be done outside and um, I think we do have maybe some room for some limited indoor tables uh, over by the library, but we're still working on that. Um, when we get to event services, maybe they can talk specifically about things, but um, yeah, I mean, everything that we're trying to figure out is here and it's all to be discussed and to be fluid along with whatever is happening with the state. Um, you know, club offices are tiny. They're still going to be open, but only one person in at a time. Um, I should say for face-to-face -face event management, I could probably make this bigger for people to read, uh, you know, we are going to hold face-to-face -face events and we're going to rely on the people who are organizing the event to monitor the event and control the event. So, you know, face coverings required for entry, please seat, sit only in the seats that are marked, follow the traffic patterns. You know, th this is all going to be, uh, you know, the responsibility of the organizer to kind of, you know, give us a plan and follow the plan. Um, you know, if, if a guest is non-compliant, if somebody is not wearing a mask, we're going to have masks available. If we're going to have hand sanitizer available, we're going to clean the rooms, we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that the, uh, oh, Craig is calling me. <laughs> uh, I'll call him right back. Uh, we're going to make sure that we don't get into confrontational situations. Um, you know, we're not going to say, you know, put on your mask. <laughs> we're going to say, hey, there are masks available in the campus center desk. Please go get one. <laughs> um, you know, we're, 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 we're going to feel the way through most of these things. Um, we're putting together the list of requirements for, you know, sporty events or singing events or theater events where physical distancing might not be possible at all times. Um, you know, and, and we're following a lot of the rules and regulations that are set up for youth sports. So, uh, you know, if, if the state says it's okay for a soccer team to do it, we're going to be okay with a Quidditch team doing it. So, uh, those are the kinds of things that we're running through. Uh, this document is long. I think it's like six, seven pages. It links to a bunch of things, including the Department of Health guidelines, um, Stockton University. Really, we're going to get as much information out as we can. Uh, we're trying to figure out any kind of new information as it shows up. Uh, as of, you know, 48 hours ago, we were looking at drastically different um, capacities in a lot of the rooms than we are now. So, I, I guess it's uh, stay tuned and ask your questions and we're always willing to talk about uh, a plan and make a plan for any kind of event. Do you mind if I add a little bit? Is sure. Now a good time? Okay. Um, so hi everybody, I'm Lori Briscom. I'm the Assistant Dean of Students and Director of Event Services and Campus Center Operations. And I have with me today as I'm looking to see who's, who's on from our office, 
Um, Mary Kate McKenna, who some of you may know, she helps to process the requests that come directly from the clubs and organizations that have been approved by your advisors. And I also have Gina Petrillo from my office, it looks like, and Lindsay Badages. Um, so we're all here to answer your questions today. Just to get started though, to kind of build off of what Jeff shared, we did update some of our materials out on our website that will serve as resources. And like Jeff said, every time the guidance changes, we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna update the resources so that you have the most up-to-date information. And so um, we were scrambling yesterday because with today being the day that we launch the Blackboard course, which is the first step in you obtaining your credentials to use the online 25 Live software to submit your requests, we were scrambling just to kind of update the information so you had the most up-to-date, hot off the presses of what the uh, governor, governor indicated would be our latest restrictions. And so while we map out sort of what our restrictions are and what our capabilities are, I'm thinking of this in terms of this is all temporary. And so while the news yesterday about us having to limit attendance to 25 kind of made me feel like, oh gosh, that, you know, that's really going to impact what we do. I'm thinking it again of, well, that's, you know, intended for our safety. And of course, our safety is number one. And that this is temporary. And so eventually we're going to get through this. And so in the meantime, we've tried to come up with the parameters and the guidelines of what we can do under those restrictions, because we still want to have fun and we want to do things and we want to connect with people and we want to engage. So um, out on our website, and, and if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. You may recall that we pull all of our events from 25 Live to display on the What's Happening calendar. So you'll notice that there's just some general tips about how the institution's handling events. And what we've done is we've now merged in the in-person bookings as well as anything that was communicated to us in an online virtual format. So we're displaying both now. And if somebody just wanted to see the online virtual, there's an opportunity here to toggle through and um, sort the types of events. And so what we're stressing here is that we want to populate the calendar with both the in-person and the virtual events because this is another source that the institution and the community uses to find out what's going on. And so if you click on the learn more button, this is really where all of your resources can be found regarding what we're doing. So we've got, again, some general tips here. We've had a couple of emails recently where folks were asking about what are the modified capacities in the classrooms that we can work through. So this link here will open up an Excel document which will show you the commonly used spaces, the original capacities, and then what the modified capacities are based on six foot spacing for each participant. So you've got a, just a, a quick resource here in this link. This box here speaks to what you need to do in order to activate your account in 25 Live to submit your request. So we've got the three steps here, with the first being make sure you're on a roster in Osprey Hub. Then you want to go through our Blackboard course. And so here's the name of what the course is. So this is a self enroll through Blackboard. And when you do the course, There'll be a variety of videos that you have to watch. It shows you a, a different set of resources that are available. And then there is a quiz because obviously um, there's some learning that happens and we are an institution of higher education. So whenever we can assess learning, we do that. So um, those are your three steps that will take you through what you need to do to obtain your credentials. Once you pass your quiz, it will take um, a day or two, and it, it may not even take that long because we're all kind of here working now, to switch your account from read only to the access that allows you to submit a request. So um, we've launched this today, so that means you should be able to go on to Blackboard and find the course and self-enroll to start the process. So the other resources that we have available here on this webpage is, again, the repository of the videos that are also contained in the Blackboard course. 
So if you ever wanted to go back to them to see them again, you don't have to actually go into Blackboard. You can just go through the different chapters here. And then we also included some sample diagrams of the different spaces and different layouts that can be considered using the six foot spacing. So at this point, when you go through and you click on a space, so for instance, when I click, it's gonna um, take a second because it's actually bringing me in to 2.5 Live Pro, which is the tool that we use. And it's gonna open up the space and it's gonna show you details about the space. So it does take a second here. So don't be alarmed by that. Um, what, you're, what you wanna focus on are setups that have a naming convention that starts with six foot spacing. And so if you click on a space, you'll see a sample diagram. And again, there's a tutorial video on this, so I'm just gonna quickly just show you that you've got a repository of diagrams to look at. We are gonna alter some of these samples now that we are in the restricted 25, up to 25 individuals in a room restriction, we're gonna make some samples. So that was you know brand new to us, so there'll be some samples here. And when you're in 2.5 Live, you'll actually get to select and say, oh, well, I want the six foot spacing classroom style for up to 25. Um, but that's kind of where you can kind of see the different samples. You'll notice if you look down the menu, these are our standard setups that we use when we're, we don't have the six foot radius restriction. So we just kind of want to focus on the six foot spacing. But again, all that's contained in your Blackboard course. And then, of course, just other tips are available on our website as well. So we're really trying to make this the one page that you can go to for all the resources that are needed related to requesting space and resources for your events. And then when you have your access and you're ready, you simply just click the button. So I guess if I could leave you with one message, it is that we still want you to dream into how you're going to contribute to an active campus life here on campus. We want you to have those conversations with your advisors. We want you to have those conversations with us. We want to see things happen and we want to just design it in a way that it's the safest way possible. And so um, we're still hoping to hear from you and we're still hoping that you're going to contribute to all those opportunities here at Stockton. And again, it's only temporary. This is temporary. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yeah, Lori, I just want to say that, like, not only is this temporary, but it's also just good practice in general. You know, if, if you're holding an on, if, if, you know, if Senate is holding a meeting, there really shouldn't be a reason for someone from Atlantic City to have to ride the bus to come in to see the meeting. You know, we, we should be working virtually and having good things for all our events. And if we're holding a virtual event, it should appear on the calendar anyway, because you want to market it in every way possible. So, um, you know, some of this may seem like it's extra steps and it absolutely is extra steps, but even without the global pandemic, some of this is good practice. Um, I was just looking at some of the, the questions that were posted here. Um, there was a question about whether or not all members of the e-board should uh, go through the Blackboard process. So my answer would be whoever you think is going to be representative um, of your organization to submit requests, then really that's the person who probably wants to go through the process. Um, it's helpful to have backup people so that you're not just limited to one person who has access and credentials to submit requests. Um, I want to give Mary Kate the opportunity also to maybe answer that question or add to anything that I had mentioned since she works so closely with the clubs and orgs and the requests that come through. So something I'm noticing as I'm going through this uh, Blackboard piece online is I'm not seeing any of place to sign up for the outside venues. Uh, is there a restriction on members outside and is there a way to sign up for outside venues with large advance notice such as uh, multiple months out okay so help me to understand what do you mean by large outdoor venues do you mean like the trlc quad are you talking about spaces 
uh, like the fields themselves. Um, okay. If we wanted to host, let's say, events in the excess of 80 to 100 people. Um, yes. So the restriction right now has us at 500 outdoors. So something that you just described would be something that we could pursue. And so you would, through 25 Live, still submit your request, even if it's for an outdoor space. And so there's a, a search tool feature in the tool, once you have access, where you can um, type in the word field, for instance, and anything that's available will pop up and you can select it. But you're not limited. Like if you don't see the space that you're looking for, there is a, a comment field box where you can just type in and say, oh, I was trying to look for an open field. Can you just find me one? And we'll process your request that way. And we'll work with you that way. So the answer to your question is yes. We want to take your outdoor requests as well. We want to track how space is used and help get those supports to those spaces and then also have the opportunity to display that event out on the web calendar as well. Then and you question? added a lot of the name, the locations that weren't in the past in the system so that people can find them. So when, when you get to the actual re reservation system, you might be surprised at how many outdoor spaces are really listed. Someday we'll have every nook and cranny named, right, Lori? We, we do have a lot of nooks and crannies named, believe it or not. Um, and again, if you don't know how we named it in order to search for it, there is a field where you can just describe the space that you're talking about and the scheduler will assign it appropriately. So don't let that stop you from communicating your needs and us trying to work through it. All right, thank you. It's an excellent answer. Uh, quick follow-up though. Um, in the past, we've, able to, we've been able to sign up for events as far as a year in advance. Um, if we're looking at event capacities in spring for potentially large indoor events, are we able to begin signing up for those now? Or because of the restrictions, are we not able to sign up for large indoor events in the future yet? So I do feel like we need to be planning for the future. So my inclination would be to go ahead and put your request in. We may not be able to process it in full if we don't have all the information. So we may just kind of have it in queue for when we're ready to process it. But I would say to dream into it and if you think you want to move forward to it, with it, to go ahead and, and put the request in. So what we did experience as a lot of the course modalities changed and our classroom capacities were restricted, some of the face-to-face -face meetings that would have happened in classes are getting shifted into some of our larger event spaces. So we're working with the registrar to see where we need to place those classes into event spaces. And then as classrooms do free up, as modalities continue to change, we're gonna to try to move those events back into classrooms. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that situation again remains very fluid. And since the academic mission of the university is priority number one, we wanna make sure we have a space for all those classes that need to meet face to face. And so then we will backfill in the events. So it is a giant puzzle piece. It is a supersized puzzle piece at the moment since everything keeps changing. But um, again, I would say don't let that stop you from telling us what you want to do so that we can try to puzzle piece it all together. We'd rather you tell us what you're trying and let us work on coming up with some options than for you to just say, oh, I'm not going to bother. Like, please don't take that attitude. Let us know what you want to do and let us see if we can figure out a way. And that's Sorry, not actually you. that different than in past years where we would have to not do reservations in classrooms until the classes were set. But people would request them and they would kind of sit in in your queue waiting to become confirmed until after the academic schedule was set. The only difference is, is that the academic schedule is bleeding into rooms that used to only be event spaces. So the, the situation has changed, but the policy is pretty similar. But I wanna stress that this week it's bleeding into event spaces but since the, the placement of courses, like every minute is changing, 
again, we're going to try to free up those event spaces and push those classes back into classrooms as those spaces free up. So I see a few questions coming through on the chat um, and just wanted to kind of read them out loud so that this way anybody who is watching this later as we're recording it um, can also hear and see those questions. Um, so one of the first questions that we got was um, if the governor updates room capacities again, will it also get updated at Stockton? Um, so yes, absolutely. Uh, that is something that, as Lori mentioned, um, we're going to constantly be changing. So we're going to be on our toes this semester. Um, like, like no semester before. Um, so yeah, so right now the guidelines um, have been reduced. The capacity has been reduced to 25 people maximum, but in a few weeks that could change. It could go down to 10, it could go up to 50. We're not sure. But as that guidance changes at the state level, we absolutely will be um, updating our guidance and room capacities as well. So that this way you can continue to deploy accordingly. Um, another question that we got was, is the Blackboard training the same one as last year? So a lot of the guidance and instructions are the same, but it has been updated with some new features that 25 Live now offers that have that weren't there in the past. Um, and it also um, includes some training and tips for event planning during this um, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so definitely, you know, don't assume that it's going to be the same questions as last year because we have updated it uh, with a lot of new information and resources. There was one other question. Some slides may look familiar, but I did wind up making changes and I had to re-record. Yeah, absolutely. So especially for people who did it last year, I mean, the process of requesting a space is very similar to last year, but there was also some new tips and resources in there as well. So, um, so yeah, so it's a little bit different, but some parts might look similar. Uh, the last question, and Lori, maybe you can help to answer this. Uh, are basketball court floor spaces in Big Blue or Iwin Gym available for reservations for the fall? That's a good question. And actually in the PowerPoint in the Blackboard course, I just very quickly make reference to that there may be restrictions. We're still working through to understand what those parameters are. So um, I can't give you specifics, but we do plan to follow up on that particular point as well as performance related events so that we have specific guidance related to that out on the website. And I think, Jeff, um, we need to probably still link directly to the document you just shared. So I'll ask Gina to make sure that once your document is posted out on the web that we link to that as an additional resource as well. Yeah, and we hope to get that posted on our page and get it sent out through Osprey Hub, uh, hopefully in a day or two. There's a, a few question marks we still have at the bottom. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how to do collections on campus. Um, so we're talking that through. And I think one quick legal review on my athletics things, and then it should be ready to publish. I didn't know if Mary Kate wanted to add anything or just say hello. Yeah. Um, miss all the student clubs and orgs and all the activity. Um, I'm hearing everyone's good message that we're open and, and we want things to happen, but within safety parameters. So I do hear also that your meetings that you generally get a zillion classrooms for would most likely be virtual. Because once again, you'll have commuters as members um, that may not be able to get to campus and so on. So just to make your programs vibrant and inclusive as best you can. Um, and if that is virtual in the beginning, um, I know you'll do a great job. So I'm here to help you. And if you have any questions, just let me know. But we look forward to the return of campus. And so again, we want you to actually request those online virtual events through 25 Live. And you just choose the space as online virtual. And then that will help us to display your event and advertise it out on the web calendar as well on that what's happening calendar. So we wanna know what you're doing. Yeah, and uh, I know Mary Kate mentioned it, but I wanna just be clear that, you know, the default mode for everybody's meeting should be virtual. Um, you know, we, we have limited spaces, uh, or we have limited size in every room. You know, you should be expecting more than 25 people at most meetings. So, you know, just, just do all the meetings virtual at the moment and, you know, we'll see how things change. But again, 
if I'm a Manahawkin student or if I've decided to stay home in my, in my home in North Jersey because all of my classes are online, we want to offer a virtual experience for them to still be a member of your club. So meetings virtually should be the, 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 the easiest no-brainer decision to make. Even if we're all back on campus and you know that your 10 members are on campus, if someone's not feeling well, you want them to stay in their room. So have that meeting virtually. Thank you. Lauren, do we want to talk about uh, Get Involved Fair or any of the big events that we know a little bit more about now than we did last time we, we met? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I know one second, we actually just have another question. Um, what should we do for club meetings that act as safe spaces? So for a lot of like our, our cultural um, organizations, Pride Alliance, religious organizations, um, you know, normally they, they meet in person. Um, so we could talk a lot about security at the different meetings for the virtual, for the virtual meetings. But um, if, if anything, uh, the anonymity that is available in a virtual meeting is probably even better than an in-person meeting. Um, obviously things like passwords and uh, all kinds of things like that are going to help, uh, but also having someone who can control the meeting and kick someone out if they're inappropriate. Um, but obviously you can be in a meeting with your camera off. You can uh, change your name on your Zoom name uh, pretty easily. Let's see here. Everybody knows I usually do. My pronouns in my meetings on my name. So I just updated my name to include my pronouns. Um, but that's something that you could all do. Trust me, I do a, a, a Boy Scout meetings via Zoom and uh, the 12 year olds love to change their names to, you know, pepperoni dog fart or whatever it is that they're working on. Um, when I have to constantly tell them, please leave your name alone. Um, so yeah, so we could definitely talk about how to keep a safe space meeting safe in a virtual environment. Um, yeah. Okay, then another question. Um, for the virtual meetings, do we host them through our Zoom accounts? I think there's a time limit. So um, I know that the university is working on this and trying to upgrade student, um, student Zoom accounts uh, so that their time limits are expanded. This way it will allow you to do study groups um, or meet with other classmates to work on projects, um, allow you to host um, organization meetings, virtual events, things like that. So uh, we do anticipate that access level changing um, for September when you all return. Any other uh, questions before I jump into some of our virtual events that we have planned for the fall? Uh, hi, yes, I'm back with another one. Um, so my, um, I'm here representing Stockton Esports and uh, we have a recurring event that we've been running on Tuesday nights for the past couple months during the summer. Uh, that is an online event. Uh, we run Tuesday game nights. I was wondering if there's a way for us to set up a recurring repeatable event on 25 Live with a hosted link to our offsite silo server where we host the events. Is that something we can do? Yes, and I see Lori nodding her head too, so I'll let her chime in. <laughs> Um, so I see Demetrius is on the line here, but in 25 Live, we do have the capability for you to put a description out on the web describing what it is, and we can drop in a hyperlink if it does need to take you somewhere else. So I just have Demetrius, um, I didn't know if he wanted to add to that, but the software allows us to do that. And uh, the Osprey Hub software allows that also. And I want to mention that because uh, we definitely talked about security at meetings, uh, just like we did for this meeting, the, um, the meeting link was actually inside the event and the event was set to Stockton only. So it added an extra layer of security because you had to be logged into Osprey Hub through your normal Stockton credentials to get access to this link today. 
So we did that because we don't want to be Zoom bombed, um, but you could obviously do that with any kind of um, any kind of event that you wanted to do that you wanted to keep more private. Any other questions at the moment? We still have lots of time left, so please feel free to ask as we um, kind of go through um, the next few things. So I really quickly wanted to show everybody um, a few things on Osprey Hub. Um, so when you go to your event, um, there's a new feature that was added over the summer. So for location, you can put an online location. So um, you know, instead of writing meeting room five, the event room, board of trustees room, TRLC, um, there's a spot where you can check that your event is happening online and put the, um, put your Zoom link. And then there's another separate box that, um, that lists Zoom instructions. So this way, if there's a number to call in, if there's a password, all that extra stuff, you can dump right into the online location instructions so that it's there for your viewers. Um, the other thing is that there is a link that ap that's appearing um, to, to manage your virtual attendance. So if you are offering, let's say, prizes for, um, you know, five random people who are who attend your event will be um, will be drawn for a prize. Um, you definitely should be utilizing this. I'm going to dump this link into the chat. Hang on one second. Um, oops, sorry. It's like when I share screen, everything kind of looks a little different. All right, well, that's, that's the big thing that I wanted to show you. So what I'm gonna do is put this, that link for attendance in the chat. If all of you can just go and click that, this way you'll automatically be marked as attended, as having attended uh, the Student Leader Roundtable today. Um, one of the other features that is new to Osprey Hub, I think it, um, I guess it rolled out last spring, but we really didn't um, utilize it or train you all on how to use it. But when you're setting up your event, you can also add a post-event evaluation for your participants. So once you click this link and you have everybody uh, marked as attended, as soon as this event is done, you'll automatically get an email asking you to complete the few questions that we have designed for this, um, for this event. Um, so this is something that if you mark it as an Osprey Advantage event, it will automatically appear on your Osprey Advantage. I don't think that I marked this one as an Osprey Advantage event, but if you are doing a, um, an educational event, leadership event, service event, um, that would be eligible for, um, you know, to, to be viewed on a, a student's co-curricular transcript, um, that would automatically happen as soon as uh, your mark is attended. Um, is there a limit to how many events we can push to 25 live per week? Um, and or if we are spamming too many events, is that an issue or can people block us? Um, no limit in 25 live. We want to see everything. Um, was, there, was there more to that question, Jacob? I mean, you should be advertising events that your club is sponsoring. So you shouldn't be pushing like outside organizations events unless you are truly a co-sponsor of it if that makes sense. I do want to say that there is a limit for the clubs and organizations who are um, putting things into Osprey Hub is we prefer that you don't put your weekly meetings into Osprey Hub uh, because the calendar uh, should only be showing the events that are public. So, you know, if it's like first meeting, opening, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, absolutely put that into Osprey Hub. Um, but 25 Live is the place where all of the meetings should be. And then events that are public should be both in Osprey Hub and 25 Live. Well, just to clarify, you can put your meetings into Osprey Hub, but when you send the um, uh, when you set your audience settings, make sure that it's only visible to club and organization members. So this way, when you log in and you're a member of the Psychology Club, you'll see that you have a meeting and you'll get that link to your meeting for that night. But if I am just an average student kind of looking for something to do. Um, when I log in the Osprey Hub, the first few events that appear on my feed are all truly events rather than psychology club meeting, um, photography club meeting, Stockton Music Union meeting, set meeting, um, and things like that because we really want um, all events to be visible to all Stockton students um, so that they can see what's going on. But in terms of the meetings, you still can put them in Osprey Hub, but just make sure that, that it's set in a way that, that it's only visible to your club members. Does yeah. that make sense? 
Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And Jacob actually was asking about that because it looks like he has five or six events per week, but they are for members only. So if you put them into Osprey Hub and just listed the the um, advertised to members only, then only the members will see it in their feed. Yeah. And that's just a courtesy thing. We're not going to be mad if someone puts their meetings in. We're just going to flip it for you. <laughs> yeah. So um, Campus Labs, which is the software company that runs Osprey Hub, um, just last week they released their virtual involvement fair uh, component. And so that's something that Jeff and I are still playing around with to see how that works. But in terms of recruiting for the fall semester, we are moving the Get Involved Fair to a virtual platform. Um, it will be different than just searching, um, you know, on Osprey Hub. There will be a way that each organization can still register for the fair and opt in. Um, there's a way that when students are searching for clubs that match their interests, um, uh, they will have an opportunity to either click the, you know, the, the join organization button, or there will also be an opportunity to do a live chat. And I believe it's gonna be a live video chat. So very similar to Zoom, it might be a different platform based on what um, Campus Labs works with. I'm not 100% sure yet, because we're still exploring it, but there will be an opportunity for one of your members to sit there and actually have a live chat as if you were sitting at an information table. Um, there is also going to be um, like a help desk, info desk component where members of our staff can kind of um, be ready and available if a student comes and is like, hey, what types of what types of music organizations do you have? What types of performance organizations do you have? Uh, what are your religious clubs on campus? Uh, our staff will be available to um, kind of monitor and manage that help desk component so that we could direct students um, to clubs that might be of interest to that person. Um, question for all of you though, and feel free to put your thoughts in the chat. Um, typically we do our Get Involved Fair on a Tuesday and Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That would be a really long time to host a virtual event. Um, I know that it has always worked because typically we kind of catch our students on the way to and from classes. Um, obviously this fall is a lot different. So I feel like in my opinion we should, I still would love to host it on two days um, so that we're capturing you know, kind of giving people options. If, the, if their courses are heavy on Tuesdays and Thursdays, then at least they can make time to come on Wednesday. Um, what time frames do you think would work best for students? So some of the ideas that we're throwing out there, like should we do 12 to 4 p.m. each day? Should we do later afternoon, maybe a three to six time frame, evenings? Um, I don't know that all of you even know the answers because I feel like we don't know what a typical day looks like and what a typical class schedule will look like this fall. Um, but knowing that one of your members will have to sort of staff a virtual table, um, what would work best for you all? And I'm hoping that you can throw some ideas in the chat. So. Or, or, just, or just share, go ahead, Jacob. <laughs> Uh, one of the times we found best is actually later in the evening slash afternoon, like four to six before dinner or the eight to ten time. Uh, okay. Obviously, eight to ten is pretty bad for staff, but um, it's more like four to six for staff. Mm -hmm. okay, so yeah, a ton of meetings happen four to six. So four to six is to normal for us. Yeah. All right, so it seems like there's a lot of different um, opinions. Evenings, nothing too early. Um, 10, to 10 to 4 time frame works uh, because if someone works afternoons, they can still pop in in the morning. Um, evenings are a little better to allow for everyone to get out of classes. Um, so it seems like there's lots of, of mixed feedback. Um, I think the 10 to 4 time frame might be a little bit long to have six hours available for both days, just since it is on, on I don't want to keep saying Zoom, but it's going to be on some kind of online uh, platform that uh, members of clubs will have to manage. Um, so we are looking to ask, how many hours do we, do we think we would prefer? Because uh, we were trying to bounce. We, we think between like three or four might be the sweet spot of being able to hit kind of that multiple time frames, but also not be so long that, you know, someone is chained to their desk staring at a screen. So there's a suggestion maybe do some blocks. So maybe 10 to 12 and then a break and then resume from four to six or if one day it's early and another day it's in the evening. 
um, maybe three and split up so it's not too long. Uh, three hours, Danielle? I'm assuming. Okay. Um, yeah, and I mean, another thing we could do is like, we, we could add a third day, like if smaller chunks of time, like if the two to three hour block is what might work best for your members to staff the virtual table. We could even do like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We can make it involvement week rather than the involvement fair and maybe even do like two hours every day. Um, let's see what else. Something has to my frame uh, so it's not too long for everyone. Um, Board time frame is also a good option. It gives our uh, members an opportunity to help out and gives everyone a chance to stop by. I like the block idea as well. Um, it's going to be impossible to maintain people's attention for three hours. Feels more like a rotation of virtual tables um, across mul multiple days would be best. Um, having it really spread out. I like the involvement week idea, much more flexible. Um, okay. Um, well, it sounds like smaller chunks, whether it's like a few different chunks a day or chunks spread out over the course of the week. Um, might might work best. So we'll kind of play around with those ideas. But if you have any other suggestions or thoughts, please email us because trust me when I say we want your feedback and really want your opinions on what will work best. Um, you know, there, there are there are also options that we could host multiple fairs. So there is an option on there, like if we wanted to do like a community service fair or host Meet the Greeks or, you know, all these other things. But at the same time, we also want to make sure that um, it's clear for our students who are kind of tapping into this experience for the first time. Um, and we don't want to spread out and have too many options where people can't find what they're looking for. Um, so we are kind of leaning towards doing, you know, a traditional, I can't even, how am I using the word traditional right now? Um, we are hoping to still keep everybody together for a one virtual fair rather than kind of breaking it up into those chunks. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe after the one that we do in September with everybody, maybe we can divide it and continue to do smaller fairs at different times to help push our community service organizations or our academic organizations or our performance organizations, um, special interest clubs, things like that. Uh, but if you have suggestions, please feel free to um, continue to share them, um, whether it's during this time that we're, that we're chatting today or following up with an email or by answering a question on the survey that you'll get after this, um, this round table. But thank you for your feedback. That definitely gives us um, a little bit more direction on, on which way to go with this. Um, so officer training is another event that we're still kind of putting together um, and, and figuring out how to make that virtual. Um, obviously, we've had pretty good success this summer with doing our summer training series in a virtual platform. And so I do anticipate that officer training will look pretty similar to this in that we will offer um, many different sessions, maybe not consolidated on a Saturday morning like we did in person, but maybe it's over the course of a two week period where we have a menu of all sorts of training options that you can, you can choose. Um, if you're not available to be there in person, not in person, if you're not able to tune in for the live event, uh, we will be recording everything and um, adding it to our YouTube channel. There's a link for our YouTube channel in the chat so that people can access that. Um, but we will be kind of keeping up with that throughout September. So this way, if you miss the, um, you know, virtual programming 101, you can go back to it. If you missed um, keeping your members motivated during a pandemic, you can go back and watch that um, at a later time. So those will always be available for you. Um, so that's how we anticipate our officer training to run this year. It's going to be a little bit more scattered throughout September instead of kind of consolidated on a um, on, on one Saturday in September. Um, the other thing that will be moving virtually, um, mostly virtually, is University Weekend. Um, so that is going to be more of a University Weekend to go this year um, and really trying to, I guess, honor the, the, the roots and the mission of University Weekend, which is really to celebrate Stockton and everything that we're about. I know that a lot of schools are uh, choosing to either cancel their homecoming and family weekend or move it to the spring. Um, but for us, like there's really no guarantee that spring will be different. Um, and so to try and postpone something to a time of year that's already so busy for our student organizations and for our office, 
just seemed a little bit um, silly. Um, I think that especially right now, so many traditions are kind of being scrapped and thrown out the window that if we can at least try and honor this tradition in one way, um, we'll be happy to try and keep some things as normal as we do. So stay tuned. Usually, um, I, I anticipate that in the next week or so, uh, we'll be sending out a survey to uh, student organizations, to faculty and staff, for anybody who has a program to propose. Um, to include for university weekend. So we're going to be offering a variety of digital experiences, but if there's a, a way that you can offer a, a physically distant in-person event, uh, we also welcome those as well. So for example, um, Fred Fest in the past was a, um, um, was an opportunity to canoe on Lake Fred um, and to, and, and that's something that we can do in a physically distant way. Um, an outdoor movie might be a great thing to offer during university weekend as a way to come together in person in a physically distant way and still enjoy something um, on campus. So we encourage you to be creative. Um, definitely talk with your advisors. We welcome all sorts of events uh, for that weekend um, and encourage you to be creative. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the things that we used to do in person are just not feasible right now. So like Lori said, it's temporary. Um, I'm hoping that if this is just a one semester of um, scrambling around and moving things to a virtual format, but we don't, we don't know. Um, but we do know that it's temporary and that at some point uh, things will change and we'll be able to do more in person. What other questions or concerns or ideas do you all have, um, whether it's for your own clubs or for events in general? Um, so you had mentioned, or someone mentioned, um, how only one person will be allowed in the club offices at a time, but then so does that mean that we can still have our offices? Yeah, our plan is to allow you access to your office. Just, okay, cool. they're kind of tiny, so you know, don't pack people in there. Right. And will we still go to the resource room to get swipe access or? Uh, yeah, so we're going to do the same, same setup where uh, if, you, if you go to the resource room, you can get access onto your card, obviously. Um, but then, uh, you know, as your officers change, you can update us and get card access to different people. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, but no hanging out. No, never. Don't, don't put groups of people singing in an office. Not the name of that. No, never. We would never do that. Ever. <laughs> Any other questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions? I think one of the things that we're really trying to do here is, is to be as open as possible to any kind of suggestion or thoughts. Um, you know, we really, we're really breaking new ground and we, we say that kind of, you know, tongue in cheek because obviously you know what what's going on is new but it's not as not as new and as fun as as you students come up with every day so you know uh, I was amazed at some of the great events that set did I was amazed that uh, you know and they kind of felt around and, and felt some good things to do and you know I told Lauren in the beginning of the summer we really should do a, a virtual leadership training over the summer and we said, well, who would go to that? You know, we got 20 people here today. So, uh, you know, and I said, we should definitely put it on YouTube. Who the heck would subscribe to that? And, you know, one of our, one of our first things that we put up was Joe Thompson did a great discussion about allyship. Um, and, and he put it out to the Greek community and a lot of fraternity and sorority men and women from across the nation are watching it. Um, because he has friends in the community from all over. So, um, you know, someone from Texas, a, a student affairs person from Texas called me the other day to try and get some new ideas. And, you know, we're sharing across the state of New Jersey and we're stealing ideas from other colleges. So, you know, every idea is a good idea. Talk to us, we can figure it out as best we can. All right, so we have a few more questions in the chat. Uh, do you think university operations will be shut down or moved back to fully virtual like last spring semester, canceling all events? I know it's hard to say. I think you answered your own question, Danielle. It is hard to say, um, but like I said, we are going to be following the state guidelines. Uh, 
guidance, guidelines, guidance, there we go, both of them. Um, and so if for some reason it does happen where the state decides that um, we need to shut down, then yes, everything will go back to fully virtual. Um, but that's not anything that we know or can predict right now. We're just kind of taking everything day by day and seeing how it develops. Um, what about volunteer events that are off campus like beach cleanups? Um, I think Jeff kind of uh, shared this earlier, but um, if there are off campus events that can still be done safely within a safe way, um, we will be allowing them. So I imagine that a beach cleanup should be allowed. Anything more to add to that one, Jeff? Uh, yeah, we're also currently watching very closely the transportation rules. Um, as you know, there isn't just guidance for how many people can be in a room, but there's guidance for how many people can be on a bus. <laughs> um, so that is going to have to remain flexible about how we get to and from events. Um, you know, personal uh, transportation is always a possibility as long as it's done kind of in a socially distant, safe manner. So, yeah, we expect off campus to be pretty popular. Well, budget. Will budgets be smaller for clubs as well, or will they stay the same? Yeah, so the budgets that Senate set are actually 100% set. Um, so they were not changed. They were not altered in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so wh whatever the Senate gave you, Senate got the same amount of money from the university and gave out the same amount of money to all the different clubs. Um, Matt, I don't know what club you're in, so I can't look it up, but uh, the... Uh, Actually, I think the Senate page, I'm having trouble. I'm working on the Senate page, everyone, and I'm terrible at web design, so I can't get it to fully function. Uh, um, but the the budget should be public on the Senate page by the end of the week. Uh, but just email us and we'll tell you. And supplementals, I see the question has come in. Will they be able to request supplementals? Absolutely. The supplemental budget is still fully intact and uh, student Senate plans on hitting the ground running and hearing supplementals as early as the second meeting. Oh, I just thought of a question. So I know in the past that we technically weren't allowed to stream movies to our members unless they were like documentaries we got from the library. But is that like basically is Literature Club allowed to like watch a movie off of Netflix and make it an event? Like, has, has that rule loosened up a little bit with these circumstances? Jeff, are you taking that one? I'm thinking. I don't know that answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think that that's something that we have to look into a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure how you know, the, the, the copyright and the public viewing of movies applies to the virtual setting. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll look into that. Lori, do you have more information on that? Just that I believe it does have some restrictions in the way those uh, copyrights are used. So we can certainly look into it, but I feel like my team has looked into it because we were looking into it for the movie night series that we do and we realized that that wasn't going to be a viable option but i don't know the specific reason why but i know we did contact swank is the company that we use to purchase the temporary copyrights so we will get clarification though on why we got tripped up with that so that we can share it with student development so that we have the right answer and i will add it to the document because that's what we cool. do we find out information we add it to the document uh, Melissa Vanderek is on the uh, on the call today or whatever meeting and she mentioned that she, I can't believe I forgot this the 2021 budgets are already loaded in Osprey Hub and already available for purchasing so um, purchasing is still taking a little longer we still have to get uh, approval through the cabinet member which is our vice president Dr. Chris Ketching so um, you know more lead time for your purchases but purchases are still happening Great. And then there's another question about um, outdoor small scale events and if there are specific capacity limits. Um, so I, I do believe that as of today, uh, we are still able to do outdoor events. Um, I believe it is up to 500 people. I'm not sure that's of the indoor attendance. 
I, um, I think it did get smaller yesterday also. The outdoor ones? Yeah, so I think it was okay. 200. All right, we'll have I'm to look sure into that. that. Please don't quote me. Yeah, I don't believe so. I actually was looking at the link yesterday. I think outdoor is still at 500, at least it was yesterday afternoon. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's another thing that we'll keep a close eye on. Um, if that does change, then again, our guidance will change as well. Um, with any events though, we do ask that you maintain the six feet of uh, social distancing and also uh, for you and your members to wear a mask as well. And uh, Diane Stalling is on, but she's on, uh, she's muted at the moment, but she's putting into the chat, just we'll get it so it's all recorded, that um, there are movie companies out there that, are, that, that may allow streaming. They all have different rules. Um, most Hollywood, you know, um, for-profit movies are held by that swank company. So that when, a lot of times we talk about that one as a general, because, you know, nine times out of 10, that's who holds the copyright to the movies that people want to show. But Netflix has a totally different uh, understanding. And um, obviously there's a lot of small companies that hold films that don't have a uh, wide commercial release that also could be talked to. I know the comedy club wanted to show the, um, oh my gosh, what is that movie that, that the disaster artist is about? The Room. Uh, the room. Literature the room. Club tried to show that too. Yes. <laughs> And uh, the only person who holds the license to the room is the guy that <laughs> whatever his name is, and he won't reply to emails. We keep emailing him about showing, and he never gets. He did back. put the whole movie on YouTube though for free. Oh, if it's on YouTube, then it is available. So uh, as long as Thanks, you watch, Tommy. Yes, yeah, Tommy was so right. Yes, my uh, hero. Yeah, so two or, two or three years ago, we couldn't figure out how to get that shown on campus, uh, but now we can. Thank God. <laughs> it's awesome. Gabby, I haven't seen it, so we'll have to, <laughs> we'll wow, do a watch great. party. Please. Me and Lauren had a whole conversation about it in her office once. <laughs> yes, we did. Great film. So fast. <sighs> Any other questions still floating around out there? I know we covered a lot today, and um, as we have been constantly saying, it's a fluid situation. We definitely will be adapting as our guidance from the government um, is changing. Um, and so we promise to keep you posted as much as we can as things develop and change. Um, we, of course, are gonna be continuing our summer training series. So next week, I believe, um, we're doing a uh, session on running a digital, running an engaging digital meeting. Um, and so again, that's Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Um, after that, we're gonna be doing an Osprey Hub 101 session for anyone who is new to kind of managing their organization page and kind of getting some of the new tips, um, seeing some of the new features that have been released over the last, um, you know, six to eight months, I would say, um, to, to really get a better understanding of how to maximize your organization's marketing tools this semester and just ways that you can continue utilize Osprey Hub as we move um, so many of our um, organizations, so much of our organizations work to a digital platform. Um, the following week, week, which I believe leads us to August 25th, um, we're going to be doing a session to kind of showcase the virtual involvement fair um, and give you some tips on how to recruit members in a digital environment. Um, and then August 27th, which is a Thursday, we're going to be doing um, another event similar to this, but hopefully with more than 20 people um, for a um, like a student organization town hall. So this way, by that point, all of our guidance for September uh, should be finalized. Um, we should know kind of where we're at with everything, hopefully, ideally, um, and, um, and allow any student organization and student leaders a chance to um, answer questions they have, get clarification on anything that still is kind of sitting in that gray area, um, and um, get ready to start the year. So thank you all again for tuning in today. I hope that this helped to give you a little bit more clarity on kind of where we're heading for the fall semester. Um, and like Jeff said, we're hoping that that document will be finalized by the end of this week. 
um, or at least at a place where we can send it. <laughs> I don't know that it's ever going to be final because things are always changing, but, um, but we will be sending that out to everybody. So stay tuned. I'm sure that many of you were um, doing screenshots or taking pictures of the screen to try and capture all that information, but we will be making that public. All right. Um, I appreciate all the questions that were asked today. If you have more questions after this, which we anticipate you will, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us um, and we will either um, let you know the answers or uh, go and search for the answers. Any other last thoughts, Jeff? Nope. Or Laura, oh, okay. We'll see you all in about a week, right, for the next one. All right. Thank Sounds you. good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe during the storm and enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.